Partners in Health is an international organization that provides treatment for HIV, hepatitis, cholera, and other devastating diseases for some of the poorest people in the world. But their biggest goal is to change the concept of world health. My guest, Dr. Paul Farmer, co-founded the organization and is the author of To Repair the World and other books on global health. Welcome to Evening Edition. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Well, you were just in Russia speaking about uh, health equality. What does health, health equity, what does health equity mean and, and how does the world get on equal footing? I think there are lots of ways to talk about health equity. We, we talk about uh, health disparities often in the United States and you know, we need to measure how we're doing in terms of basic indicators like child survival, maternal mortality, and then ad, uh, address the problems that, that we can see by looking at these numbers. So that, that's a kind of dry way of saying that providing this package of really important health services for everyone, especially the poorest or the, uh, those most vulnerable, that's what global health equity is to us. In, in some of these things we're talking about, uh, you know, trying to treat people for hepatitis C, and, and I know that treatment's very, very expensive. Um, what kind of incentives do you think are needed, especially in the pharmaceutical industry, to uh, help people treat and cure diseases on a global level, on a global health level? Well, I think, you know, a lot of the people who uh, do the basic science research or clinical trials that would show something's effective, like the ex example you just gave, hepatitis C, they're excited also about global health equity. So finding a way to bring them into this discussion and then to deliver the care to those who need it most, I think we'll find willing partners if we invest heavily enough in that process of delivering high quality health care for everyone. Um, the people I was working with in, uh, in Russia, a lot of them are in prison. And uh, I still think there's been a lot, I've seen a lot of enthusiasm uh, in prison officials for improving healthcare inside Russia's prisons and have seen it improve. So I, I think if you think about the pharmaceutical industry, the government, the uh, clinicians and the non-governmental organizations working together, you can get a lot done in my experience. Well, it's, it seems that's happened already because you published pu a paper this month on the progress of health equity in Rwanda. Uh, what happened there to make the unprecedented recovery in their, their health delivery system and health care following the million person genocide uh, that happened there 20 years ago? Oh, one of the biggest uh, reasons for their success, I think, was, again, using this equity approach. So in Rwanda, that meant how do we get to the rural people, the rural poor? How do we get to uh, uh, victims who survived the genocides, uh, including uh, genocide widows? There were, um, how do we take on the hard diseases uh, like AIDS in addition to the more straightforward vaccine-preventable illnesses? So they really focused a lot of their investments on these rural areas on making sure that the poorest people in the country, which they measured, um, they used the quintile approach, the, poor, the poorest fifth got services. That was really quite unusual. And I'm, I think they were, that was part of the reason that the recovery has happened so quickly is they, they focused on those who needed the most uh, attention. Um, you've used phrases like uh, stupid death and smart, smart aid. So stupid death and smart aid. Define those for us. Well, I got the term stupid death from, from, uh, from Haiti. I just heard someone referring to a, a catastrophe, a young, a young woman who's actually a friend of mine who died shortly after childbirth. Her, her younger brother said, well, that was just a stupid death. And I had this epiphany. Um, you know, that is, this, you know, the, it was horrible and tragic and painful, but it's just also stupid. Because, because it could be prevented? Because it could be prevented, and it could have been prevented uh, at many steps along the way, and it could have also been treated with, you know, uh, modern, with a hospital. Oh, you know. what about the smart aid? Well, uh, you know, if you, if you look at um, value for money, if you look at how much are we getting back um, based on our investments, we, we could invest a lot more in in, uh, in development assistance, in programs that would provide medical care to people like the ones in rural Rwanda. By, that, by the way, that was supported by smart aid, in my view. We, can, we need more, but we can al also use the money more wisely uh, and focus more on the delivery of the health services or delivery of the services in general that we know will work. What do you think is the most effective type of international aid? Well, I, I can point to some examples, I think, that uh, we should be proud of, Americans should be proud of, for example, supporting um, 
AIDS treatment uh, across the world, especially in Africa, that's one of the ways that some of that money went into rebuilding the Rwandan healthcare system. In other words, it was money for a specific problem, which was the leading killer of young adults, but it was focused on building the system. That's smart aid. Focused, focused aid. All right, well, we are out of time. Dr. Paul Farmer, thank you so much for talking Thank you for us. having me. Thank you.